what is up guys welcome back to the channel i know it's been a while since i actually made a video for you guys but uh yeah i'm here let's go ahead and dive into today's video let's go So these are some of the tools that we're actually going to be needing for the install here. We got your uh, 17 in, inch, uh, 17 millimeter flared and wrench. And then also you're going to need your 14 here. We're going to break the lines at the very bottom of the car here. Um, uh, we need these here. I would highly suggest to get these. If you don't have any, um, we're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to pop open the top portion of the fuel hanger okay we're going to need some needle nose pliers as well these could work as well um and then maybe a, a flathead screwdriver uh with the, with the little hammer uh that way we can uh, knock the very top of the hanger loose with this here we're not gonna use the piece that or not the piece but that special tool that uh that you get from Mitsubishi okay we're gonna be using this here and this here okay um, so these are the tools you're gonna be needing now let's get to the fuel pump okay so that's the fuel pump we're gonna be installing today and uh, as you can see this is the part number here I got it off extreme PSI and this is considered the 525 liters per hour uh, Hellcat fuel pump quote unquote that's what the, they have it in the website as this is very important especially when you're installing this on a second generation dsm all-wheel drive car uh the, just because of the way the fuel hanger is uh we're going to be using this toyota fuel pump filter or seal or whatever they call it this is the part number here it's only a couple bucks but uh definitely i would recommend on on getting this guy here that way you don't have to be uh fooling around with uh pressure issues further down the road because i have tried to macgyver uh, uh the fuel pump to somewhat seal in the hangar and i never got it i never got a good result out of it so uh this is going to be your best friend here this toyota uh seal okay and then after that um, i do have the sock i ordered so besides the fuel pump and the seal here you're going to want to order as well the installation kit because it comes with the sock okay if you just want to order the sock itself i'm assuming you can probably get it just by this number here and uh we're going to be using this connector here okay and i want to say this here we don't we don't we're not going to need okay don't take my word for it as we go along in the video you'll find out but uh but yeah this is everything that you're gonna need to install a walbro 400 450 and 525 hellcat uh fuel pump okay uh, i guess it's made from ti automotive but i don't know whatever anyways let's go ahead and get into it and uh let's get inside the car so you guys can see what i have what we have to do okay so we're gonna start off by doing undoing the line here this connection here and like i said if you have flared in uh wrenches they're gonna be your best friend because these are very hard to come uh, come loose i honestly would prefer starting here versus up there because the hanger up there is very sensitive so yeah Okay, so you know how I said at the beginning you needed a 17 and a 14 flared end wrench uh, to get to pretty much loosen that guy up. I lied. Okay, you're going to need a 19. You're going to need a 19 and you're going to need the 14, which is already on. So 19 should go in somewhat like this. Uh, if I can get, if I can get it. Ah. Uh, whoops you get the point so i'm gonna put this guy here and then the 14 at the other end 
and have a crack at it okay so what you want to do is uh try to loosen up the side that has the 14 and hold the side the 19 still okay that's how you're going to loosen it up it's up to you if you want to have a rag underneath right here um that's definitely up to you i don't think there there shouldn't be a lot of fuel that should drip out but whatever i'm just gonna chance it okay all right i'll be back once this is loose all right so after fighting with this line for a little while i was finally able to undo it here it is so like i said you you pretty much hold this end with a 19 flared inch wrench and then the 14 here you break that sucker loose now we're gonna go up here and work on the very top of the car So what we need to do is, let me put this seat back. What we need to do is remove this bottom portion here. And the way you do it is actually you pull these little tabs or some little tabs right here at the bottom. Pull them towards you and lift this up. And then the same thing here, pull this guy out and lift it up. And pretty much that's how you remove the <laughs> the bottom, bottom bench seat, I guess, or part of the seat. So after that, you're gonna be exposed to this area here and we, we're gonna be working with this with this guy, okay? All right, so we're gonna start off by pretty much uh, removing these screws around here, around this cover plate here, this shield. Okay, we're gonna remove those and then I'll be back once I do, okay? Okay, we got the screws off right here. So we're gonna move this out of the way. Every time you lift it up, you wanna be extremely careful because it is a little bit tight, honestly, uh, as far as the connections go. But we're gonna be loosening up this guy here. This guy here, hopefully you're able to see it. I'm sorry about the lighting. I know the lighting's not that great. Um, but there it is. I'm gonna be loosening up this guy here. And then following after that, thanks. After, after that, uh, there is another connector here sometimes it's actually attached to, to part of the frame here but i was able to maneuver it out so we gotta undo this clip here and like i said undo this guy here so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and then i'll be back all right okay so i was able to get the connectors undone okay both of them so we're gonna shove this this piece to the side here um so it won't interfere with what we're doing for the time being and now what we're gonna do is uh remove these guys here with the needle nose pliers okay both lines uh we're gonna do that and then pretty much pull these hoses back out okay okay so i was able to undo those hoses uh just by pretty much compressing these clamps and and um what i normally do before i actually break this loose I end up marking like a straight line here and then here in the in the actual fuel hanger but i don't do it with a marker obviously because it's you know you're dealing with fuel it can definitely wash away so i end up uh using i don't know something like a sharp edge you know just uh marking it straight 100 percent straight and make sure it lines up right here so that's what i'm going to focus on right now and then after that i'm going to be back and we're gonna break this loose okay all right so as you can see this is pretty much what i do i know the line's not 100 percent straight but it's straight enough that way when it's time to put this back in to the fuel tank you pretty much have a general idea how you know how it's supposed to go back in you know um and then one thing i ended up doing is you guys can definitely skip the step but I had a rough time in the past uh, trying to get the hanger out 100% straight up uh, out because of this reason here. Because uh, I had to kind of bend this in a way where it won't interfere with the fuel line as I'm pulling up. Right here should be enough. This is all you need. What I end up using is just a little bit of, a, of, of these here. Just bend and do this action here just bend it back bend it back a little bit 
um, that's all you need and then you can definitely bend it back with like a little hammer or the same tool there okay so now we're gonna be pretty much pushing this this uh, lock here uh, in this direction the direction the screwdriver the, not the screwdriver but this pry bar is facing and we're gonna tap it okay we don't have the Mitsubishi special tool uh, so this is the way we're gonna do it we're gonna tap this tap it keep tapping it as it you know as we go along so it's gonna break this loose and then we'll be able to pull this guy out okay okay so I was able to break it free and now as you can see I'm rotating it by hand it's pretty much loose honestly pretty much loose so now all we got to do is kind of wiggle this out you know front back front back so it can break the seal ah, there it goes and now what we're gonna do is uh, lift this guy up as best as we can without damaging anything straight up oh and that's great homeboy had almost a full tank of gas Yeah, so there it is there's your fuel pump hanger I'm gonna let it drip just a little bit um, so I can work with it outside okay once uh once it's finally dripping the very last bit we'll start working on it outside okay all right so here's the hanger out of the car we're gonna start by pretty much undoing this bracket here and uh, by doing so you need a Phillips screwdriver to get there and break it loose there you go And you remove pretty much this piece here from the bottom of the fuel pump like so just like so and then pretty much what you're gonna do is uh wiggle this thing down well not down but towards away from the fuel hanger i can get it right, it's on there Good. there we go okay so you got the uh, your o-ring and a small little filter which normally um i don't know why but every time i open them up it's missing so whatever and then you got your connector for the fuel pump here so we're gonna undo that all you do is press it down and it should release it my gloves let me and there we go so now what you got to investigate is which one is power and which one is ground on the fuel pump you can actually see which one's positive and which one is negative right here um, and based off that you're going to know exactly which wires go where on on the hellcat fuel pump so let's go ahead and uh get the wiring harness for the for the hellcat fuel pump um another thing i forgot to mention is we are going to need some crimps wire strippers okay that way we can uh crimp the connector um onto here okay so let's go ahead and uh let's go ahead and do that all right let's go okay so like i said you're gonna need at least two crimps here's your wire strippers and my crimper here um this is the pigtail i showed you guys earlier um this is what we're actually going to be adapting in onto here so pretty much cutting uh to the appropriate wire and then uh putting the other end right here this this pigtail so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and i'll be back as soon as i'm done with all mm -hmm. okay this is my sloppy but working connector okay that we use this pigtail we did have to shorten it up a little bit but uh nevertheless it's done now we're going to introduce the the hellcat fuel pump onto here so uh i'll be back okay so here it is here's the hellcat fuel pump and it already comes with its own connector pretty much what you need to do is uh, obviously take it out of here. There you are. We're going to take it out of here. 
and then uh, we're gonna put this sock on the pump okay so I'm gonna take out the sock out of here if my gloves can let me there we go Bam. Oh, okay. I don't think it wants to come out maybe I might need a flathead to remove this um, let me go ahead and uh, remove it with a flathead I'll be back as soon as I get this sock installed all you need to do is just pretty much press it onto here make sure it grabs onto this, sh this little nipple and that's it all right so there we are we got the we got the sock installed all, all I had to do honestly is just press it in that's it um, make sure it's flush make sure it's pressed in all the way and it's grabbing that small little shaft uh, in there so now what I'm gonna be focusing on is uh, the seal here at the very top normally what I what I end up doing is uh, I end up cutting one of the of the little ribs here at the top I think I'm gonna do it here uh, I'm gonna be slicing it maybe with a small little saw and then after that I'm gonna be installing like I said this seal at the very top okay this is the Toyota seal you can go to a Toyota dealer and get it there or you can purchase it online um, this definitely helps with the fuel pressure you know uh, not leaking back out back into the tank um, I had that happen before on a few cars where we installed um, one of these pumps not necessarily the Hellcat but the 450 and um, you can see in the fuel pressure regulator gauge it was just going berserk um, nevertheless this is one good fix to get you back up and going okay but I'm gonna remove that rib just because I want this pump to sit a little bit more towards the top um, and if I do it like so it's gonna sit more down and I don't think I'll be able to put this uh, or install this to hold the pump okay all right so we got the seal I just used a little bit of natural lubrication Try to press it in there and see what happens. Obviously, you don't want to damage the seal. But you want to make sure it walks in there. Sometimes you might get away with uh, putting maybe a little bit of lube inside, just a little bit, um, to help it. You know, to help the seal press in all the way. Let's see. I want to have it like this. Yes, like this. Okay. You just got to take your time. You don't definitely don't want to rip the seal, even though it is cheap. Sometimes the dealers might not have it uh, in stock, so you have to wait for it, you know, to arrive. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm gonna. I'll be back I'm gonna try to press this in massage it in nicely but I'll be back once I do okay all right so uh, this is pretty much how the fuel pump is sitting on the fuel hanger now um, I was able to secure it you know with the zip tie in the back I clipped the connector back in um, like I said I did have to trim one of the little ribs at the very top so it can sit all the way inside I don't think you guys will be able to see it but it's in there uh, we got that Toyota seal uh, made it up to this to the shaft here of the pump everything's good uh, since we are going to be introducing much more pressure uh, than stock we needed to return in a certain manner so what we're going to do is uh, that way we don't overrun the fuel pressure regulator um, we're going to actually open this guy up we're going to open this this guy up the little hole inside we're going to open it as big as we can and then uh, we'll go from there. I'll let you guys know what drill bit I ended up going at the very end. Okay. Then just little by little, you know, start start increasing your size. Um, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna go with this guy here now. And then uh, just keep going, okay? Okay, so that's pretty much uh, 
what it should look like maybe you guys hopefully you guys are able to see it so before we had a small little pinhole and now we should be returning much more fuel back uh in a nice manner and the biggest drill bit size that i went with here is a 1364 1364s i'm i'm not sure if you'll be able to see that but um there it is i'm pretty much done so all it is guys honestly is just uh doing all of these modifications um not really much modifications honestly to adapt the the hellcat or any any 450 or even 400 uh, liters per minute uh, fuel pump from ti uh, automotive uh, which you know they are made from walbro you know it's a walbro fuel pump uh, but they are not whiny okay and they are compatible uh the 450 and the 525 the hellcat fuel pump are compatible with the e85 so you know if you run those type of fuels this would definitely be the way to go i don't think i'm going to rewire this fuel pump at least right now today i'm not going to be doing that um so yeah guys So that's pretty much how you install the Walbro 450 and also the Walbro 525, which is hot. And this happens to be this type of fuel pump. So um, that's pretty much how I do it. Um, it's not not that much. It just it is a little time consuming. So make sure you have a few hours to spare once you actually do you get the time to do this install. If you prefer to go this route, you know these pumps are good for E85. That's one of the reasons why we decided to install this type of pump um so yeah hopefully you guys liked the video if you guys did make sure you guys uh you know you guys do and comment if you have any questions subscribe right now will actually be a really good time to subscribe if you haven't done so um just because honestly i don't know exactly when i'm going to be posting again so um i had to make time you know just to do this video i will give you guys an update on the talent um, I know it's been almost almost a year since we actually pulled out the motor. I do have a few updates, you know, to get you guys uh, up to date uh, with these cars. As you guys can see, there's this guy here. He actually came back, um, but you know, we do have plans. We actually made some plans and we knocked them out of the park. I, I just haven't pick, been picking up the camera, but nevertheless, if you guys want to know exactly what happened with this car, what happened with the Talon um or at least where we're at with the talent make sure you guys subscribe that way you guys won't miss any more videos all right so till next time let's go